diving bird is not yet uh, is, is not enough you have to find a discipline you have to find uh, an ocean uh, you should not be dwelling with small water pools you should be going really into the ocean right uh, a diving bird in the shore has no use the diving uh, bird uh, should go into the ocean and it should deep it should go deep down and uh, come out with a treasure and in the last line he, said, he says such a treasure that all the goldsmiths should be amazed so you should come out with something really new uh something brilliant uh the experts of the area experts of the uh discipline should be amazed and admired and they should be accepting it with a great success so in the calligraphy art uh, if we can bring this subject to the calligraphy art uh, some of our friends are just happy to to play with the letters to to do some artistic things, uh, but they are not uh, changing uh, a lot. They are lost in the discipline. They are blocking themselves with all the traditional things. And they are talking uh, as a rich man, as a scholar, as whatever, uh, but not to teach people, but to, to say that they are better from all the others uh, in terms of having the knowledge. So some letters all around dots and dots, some technical uh, lines and little de details. Uh, it's okay, it's good. Uh, the form of the letter is to be perfect, uh, but only playing with the letters uh, will not make you, will not take you anywhere. Like the Rumi saying in uh, his Mesnery, uh, he is complaining about the people who are uh, talking too much about Arabic calligraphy, Arabic, excuse me, Arabic grammar, uh, and Nasarayan, uh, Nasra, Nasirun, all these. Uh, Arabic technical uh, linguistic knowledge uh, and blaming all the others to be ignorant. So when Rumi uh, met such person, he just said, for how long will you be beating around the bush? For how long will you be standing behind, uh, be, be, before the fence why don't you just jump over the fence and eat the grape? He was using the letters, the forms of the letters uh, as a metaphor, as a fence made of sticks around the wine yard. And the people who are only dealing with the letters, dealing with the uh, outer, parts, the formal parts of the things uh, is useless to his understanding. And he calls those people to get into the meaning, to, uh, to get the tasty fruit of that wine yard. I mean, the grapes, not the wine, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> this was a joke. <laughs> Correct. Anyway, so like mm -hmm. that, uh, the people uh, sometimes are too much busy with the forms, as I've said, but some others are too much happy with whatever the applause comes from the audience. So because of the people's uh, ignorance about the art, about the subject, about whatever, uh, or if they, if they find someone who is making such or, or, or playing with such uh, interesting things which 
in this century, there's not any much any more room uh, in most of the social public life. So actually, some of the brothers are dealing with something uh, of the uh, past millenniums, right, from the medieval times. One way, this is something bad. Right? In the other way, it is something good, right? Because uh, the knowledge should not be disappearing from anywhere. Some people uh, have the responsibility to carry on the traditions, to introduce uh, some new things, uh, or to help uh, to help to connect the future with the past, right? Uh, so some people are, as I've said, are happy to be making some artistic things, which has no meaning. Exactly. Right. They have also they have become very famous just because of the ignorance of people. Excuse me. They have become very famous because of the ignorance of people. They have kept making all with colors and with textures. They are doing the art. Yeah, art art is very attractive. I, I actually I don't want to blame them because uh, the calligraphy art has a formal beauty as well. Yes. So in in most cases the meaning. Uh, sometimes is not so important because, because it's attractive. But the point is, uh, when people are attracted, there must be someone to give the message. Yes. Right. Uh, either the work uh, talks for itself because it's quite legible, it's quite artistic, beautiful, whatever. But uh, the composition at the same time is as simple as possible and it's just legible. Uh, having all the technical uh, correctness and beauty and whatever. Uh, but sometimes the works are not for reading uh, because they become like a logo or something. Uh, and you don't need to sometimes know the Arabic letters to understand the meaning. Uh, it's a bit confusing, but I'll explain because uh, for a European person, for example, or for a non-Muslim, let me say, uh, or for a Muslim person which, who, yeah, who has not yet connection with the Islamic letters, you know, some new converts, yeah. some whatever. So they find it quite hard uh, because their life is completely full of with Latin letters. Uh, everything is... Uh, based on these letters and only in the masjids or in private Muslim areas uh, they, they can have the uh, chance of meeting with the Islamic letters. There are some countries like that. So they are with the anti-propaganda, uh, you know, the, the Islamophobia material, whatever. They are yeah. sometimes even uh, trying to uh, you know, keep their distance from the thing. But how, how the Muslim tradition be reminded to those people? The one way is just to translate it to English and uh, give the knowledge. But the art uh, has another uh, Fact. situation, has another, uh, I would say, power, Impact. I would say impact and power yeah. it it makes a beautiful thing but that beauty is uh, something unique for example it is not uh, uh, it is not a familiar form like apple or horse or whatever or beautiful uh, any any object in life there are some lines uh, some colors and some basic forms, sometimes it's uh, round, sometimes uh, square, whatever. Uh, the Muslim people who uh, know the knowledge or who are familiar with the text, they can easily recognize and they can uh, read the subject and they may enjoy, oh, what a beautiful calligraphy piece that that verse is written in such a beautiful way. They may enjoy that. But for a non-Muslim person, it is, 
sometimes only something attractive. <clears throat> but they start asking uh, about the content. So th this is the meeting point. So uh, sometimes you just can create something that may attract people. It, it has such a, uh, a strange power with its formlessness. Uh, but for the Muslim people uh, also, who has uh, no information about how to read and write, especially with the texts composed uh, so densely crowded way, uh, even for a professional artist, sometimes it's not easy to make the sentence out of a very, very much mixed composition. But once uh, it is explained, the next time you see the same crowded piece, uh, you, can, you can easily and actually uh, quite successfully can get the meaning. Uh, it becomes like a logo, like a, uh, l like an image uh, that keeps all the information in its form, right? So you, th then you don't need to find the letters one by one and uh, try to figure out the meaning. It is, uh, it's already there, like seeing the Bismillahir Rahman Rahim with the scene stretched. You know, it, it starts bare scene and you stretch the scene and all the rest is coming uh, close by. So all over the world, wherever you go, uh, when you show most of the Muslims this um, particular composition, everybody will recognize it. So even the people who doesn't uh, yet learned calligraphy, even a child, for example, uh, because of the cultural environment they are living in, they can easily recognize the form of Bismillah Rahman Rahim, even if there are some mistakes in it. They can say, oh, this can be Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, I remember this uh, little thing about uh, something similar in the end, uh, about the fact that Muslim people who live in the same uh, cultural environment in the same civilization, uh, they generally behave similarly. Uh, there was uh, a convert in England when I was in 1999, uh, the first time I think I, uh, I had ever been in England. Uh, there was a convert I was introduced to. He was an English uh, man. Uh, he was a carpenter. And his profession was collecting uh, wood from the uh, from the wood <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. in in this, in strange forms, and without changing the natural forms, he was making furniture. He was attaching some uh, oddly shaped, uh, naturally uh, oddly shaped uh, wood together, and he was making chairs and everything. And uh, when we were introduced uh, as a guest coming from Istanbul as a calligrapher, he enjoyed uh, talking. And uh, he also enjoyed showing me his uh, little piece of work uh, very proudly because he had made a, a rahle. You know the rahle? Yeah. Uh, whatever you the read. Baby, baby, yeah. It, it's it's a folding, uh, folding. Yeah, in, in, in India, they they call it rihal. Rihal. Ah, rihal. Yeah, rihal. Rahle. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It, it just works like that. Yes. There was something on the shelf with all the other books. He just pulled one of the book. I thought it was a book, but when when he folded up a couple times, it became a rahle. It was such a brilliant thing. He he had made it. Uh, by his own uh, carpentry profession. And he said, uh, there were some minor uh, things to work on and uh, he would be introducing this as a beautiful uh, material for the Muslim world. Uh, and I enjoyed to see it myself as well. Uh, but 
two, three days later, he came uh, to visit uh, in the house where I'm staying, where I was staying by the time. Uh, uh, he brought that uh, little thing, uh, but this time he had covered it with some cushion on it. And he put the thing in the room and said, okay, why don't you just sit on it? It is very comfortable, he said. <laughs> oh my God. But, and I said, why should I sit on it? And he said, but it's very comfortable and it's very, um, you know, easy to carry. Uh, you can fold it and put it in the pocket and whatever, uh, wherever you go, you can uh, open it and sit on it. And he said, and I asked him, I, I, I at the same time was trying to be polite because he was just uh, a convert, uh, a new brother. I don't want to, you know, put all the blame, all the negativity on it. Uh, I was trying to encourage him uh, to work on uh, something Quranic, not something as a furniture. And I asked him, who will buy it? And he said, all the yoga trainers, you know, the, the people who are going to picnic or he, he count a couple of other things. And I said, okay, this is, in that manner, is a very successful uh, invent and you can make lots of money about it. But if the third of the world is Muslim, somehow, either well performing or a bit lazy or whatever, uh, you'll be losing your market in one third because no one will sit on it. I was so definite and he couldn't understand. And by the time uh, a guest came in, which was from Pakistan, uh, actually he is Soraya, she is Soraya uh, oh, from London. By the time we were, uh, we were studying calligraphy for, for the first time, I think. Uh, he just came in. He did, she didn't uh, know the subject that, that we were talking. But when uh, that guy uh, asked her to sit or to try sitting on it, she just refused and said, why should I sit on the Quran? Rahle? <laughs> <laughs> this is so simple. So if you are living in the uh, Muslim civilization, if you are part of it, uh, there are already some uh, some behavior uh, similarity, right? The same thing uh, happens in the calligraphy as well, in the in the forms, in the in the things that we are living in the daily life. Uh, just because we are sharing the Muslim uh, civilization, we have so many common things, and uh, the calligraphy art on itself is uh, a unique art to be able to bring all the Muslim communities together uh, because our civilization is based on Quran uh, and the calligraphy art, uh, if we are talking uh, about that art today, is, uh, is because of the Quran, right? So the calligrapher, uh, calligraphers or the students or the masters should always keep in mind that they are actually uh, in a position to serve the word of Allah. It is not simply an art uh, related uh, area. It's actually uh, a functional, uh, uh, needs a dedication. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a Muslim, uh, contribution uh, to the spreading of the meaning uh, that was revealed to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, brought by Jibra'il Alayhi Salaam by Allah, right? So this is a, uh, quite a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of the people. So the Muslim artists should be uh, you know, aware of this, this situation. Uh, they should not be uh, only uh, be employing as an artist. They should be enjoying to be 
a good faithful Muslim who serves uh, the Quran, who serves the word, word of Allah. So are there any other uh, questions uh, or? Ustaz, actually, uh, we, this meeting time is going 